All right, so today I'm gonna go over the new home buyer checklist. So when we first meet with a new client, uh, what we really go over is kind of figuring out what they're looking for. You wanna find out what city they're looking at moving to, what uh, area of town they're looking to move to, what size home, is it a condo, is it a single family residence, what is the priorities that really matter to them, and how can I help search and find what they're looking for and help them guide or help guide them in their own search so that uh, we can really find what they're looking for. And one of the ways that we do that is have them just kind of go through a checklist and figure out what's really important to them because you're going to have a long list of things that you want and then you're also going to have a list of things that you need and you have to figure out uh, what that want list is and what that need list is because uh, as it gets to a point where you're going to have to decide between location or price or if you have a doggy door on the home, you're gonna to need to decide what's really important. And so by putting together a list and prioritizing it, you're gonna kind of nail down exactly what you want in a home. The key things you wanna look for first is obviously location. That's what everyone is always searching for first is location, location, location. And uh, then you wanna look at price and what you're pre-qualified for. And then from there kind of dialing in what meets your needs and your priorities compared to the location and the price. Here are some things that you're gonna to wanna to put on your list and kind of prioritize how uh, and when or if you need it. So one thing might be laundry. Do you want, uh, if you're looking at a condo or a townhome, uh, it doesn't need to be in unit laundry. Uh, if it is a single family residence, do you want the laundry to be in the home? Do you want it to be in the garage? Or do you want a laundry room? Another thing you're gonna look at is, uh, f you know, the interior of the home and does it meet what your aesthetic is? Do you want it to have hardwood floors, laminate floors, carpet floors? Uh, do you want it to be in move-in ready condition? Or do you want to put in a little bit of time and make it to what you really want it to look like? Parking, is it need to have a driveway, a garage, or are you okay with street parking? That may seem kind of strange if you're not in Southern California, but uh, parking in big cities is, is a very tough thing and your home may not offer parking um, in the driveway, you may not have a driveway, or you may have to share a spot um, if it's a condo and how many spots you need uh, per unit. And so parking is something that you need to figure out early and figure out what is the necessity and how many spots and is it need to be covered or can it be street parking, can it be a carport? And so just kind of figure that out is very important right from the start. Another thing to think about is school districts. Is it in a area that fits with the school district and the needs of your family? Or if you do not have kids, uh, you might be thinking, well, why does it matter if it's near school? Well, if it is across the street from a school or down the street from a school that's gonna have heavy traffic in the morning when you're leaving for work, is that gonna be a problem? Um, or if down the road you're thinking of reselling it and you think it might be more desirable if it is in a school district that you know is very popular. So you wanna really think about uh, the school district and if it fits your needs and then also um, if it could be a traffic jam for you in the early mornings if it's too close to a school district. Another thing to think about is appliances. And does the home come with kitchen appliances or is it a necessity for you? Uh, if you're used to cooking with a gas stove and the home offers a electric stove, is that gonna be a problem? Or do you have a specific uh, fridge and stove that you plan on bringing to your new home? Or is it something that uh, you'll need in your new home and you don't want to purchase? And so, just because the home has those things in the uh, when you're in the home when you're viewing it, doesn't mean that that comes with the home. So you also want to check with uh, the listing and make sure that 
uh, everything that you see in the home and is actually included and isn't uh, separate and being taken with it by the being taken by the seller uh, when they move out so that you know exactly what you're getting when you get your new home. Another thing to think about when getting a new home is a pool. Is it a plus or a minus if the home has a pool? And if you're looking for a home that has that you really need a big backyard and that backyard is now taken up by a pool, is that going to be a problem? You should also think that, you know, a pool can be filled in if that is one of the things that's on your criteria is a big backyard. Maybe you have a dog and you want a place for them to run around. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, the home is exactly what you're looking for. So you could do, uh, if you have the budget for it, you could add um, a fill in to the pool and make it your backyard. Or um, maybe you're searching for a pool and you just want to think about the maintenance costs and water costs that that's going to entail and just kind of plan out uh, does it make sense and if you can get that same home for a lower price than another home you're looking at but it, this one has a pool and that one doesn't have a pool what's the cost and benefit of both so you'll notice I didn't say anything about square footage and the reason is uh, because square footage can be very different based on the layout of the home I do think it's important to um, obviously narrow down the number of bedrooms that you want in a home but by looking only at the minimum square footage amount you could be missing out on a home that feels much bigger than it actually is because it's a more open floor plan based uh, versus a home that may have um, a little bit more uh, square footage but is a little bit more of a maze feel to it so you don't want to necessarily look at the square footage or the cost per square footage you want to make sure you're looking at the home and does it meet all your needs and does it have a, um, a feel that uh, is what you're looking for Lastly, you want to put on your list uh, deal breakers. So are, is there anything in your search that is going to be a no-go no matter what? If you find the most amazing home ever, it has everything you're looking for, but it's on a very busy street and you do not want to live on a very busy street, then that should be under your list as well. So you want to put together the pros and what you're looking for, and then you also want to look at uh, the deal breakers and what's going to be a, a no-go no matter what the situation is so that you're just not wasting your time checking out homes that you know are not going to be a good fit for you. So the new home buyer checklist is definitely something that is for anyone searching for a home for the first time but it's also good if you're a seasoned vet and you've purchased a few homes but no matter what you're thinking of you want to narrow down your search and you want to find out what a priority to you is and that's why writing it down in a list of wants and needs is going to help so i hope that this video was helpful helpful for you uh, my name is Shane Inman with Remax Estate Properties. If you are looking to purchase a home in the future and you'd like help getting started, feel free to comment or message below. I will also uh, put a link for our new home buyer checklist. You can sign up and get a checklist of your own.